Hey, what's up everybody? It's Coach Matt over here, Primal Athlete Training Center, www.primalatc.com. All right, so just got in. It's Sunday. Had to take a quick run by the gym today because we were actually indoors. It's so cold outside and snowy outside that we actually came in today and did drills, which is a great thing every so often to do. A lot of times because you are doing multiple repetitions after repetitions, of special strength and special drills for each event, you find out a lot of little things that need to be fixed. So now heading into the end of the season, this awful weather and frigid cold, freezing cold temperatures was actually a blessing in disguise. Now guys, what we are doing today is answering a quick question from a YouTube viewer, EB5005. And he wants me to do a video on conditioning for throwers. Basically what he says in his uh, message is that his coach has them running long distance. His coach has them running for miles, exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point, as he put it, has him running for miles. And he'd like me to do a video on conditioning for throwers. So here is my short video on conditioning for throwers. First and foremost, if we take a look back at some videos we had done on training for throwers, you know that explosiveness and endurance are on the exact opposite side of the spectrum from each other. Endurance is doing something for a long period of time at very or little strength and slowly. Okay, so you think of a distance runner. Now, no offense to distance runners, but they're doing something for a very long period of time. They are doing something slowly. Okay, you're not running five miles at 100 meter pace. You're running five miles at five mile pace. It's slow. And there's not a whole heck of a lot of strength or force that goes into it. You're not exploding like an Olympic lifter or you're not exploding like you're jumping off the ground with every step. It's a slow, controlled pace that's repeated over and over and over and over again. Well, take what I just said and compare that to what you do in the throwing circle. Does not apply. Does not compute. Here's why. In the throwing circle, number one, the event takes a fraction of a second. You need to be as quick and as explosive and strong as you possibly can for, again, a very short period of time. Then you have a little bit of a break, a couple of minutes before you're able to get in the circle and do it all over again. So again, quick and ballistic and explosive for a short period of time with a long period of rest. The exact opposite of what running long distance does for you. So am I saying that throwers need to be, you know, lazy and not able to have any endurance or run? Absolutely not. You want to run one lap during your warm-up or two laps at the very beginning of practice? Yeah, everybody in the world should be able to do that. You need to have at least a little bit of endurance. You need to just be a normal functioning human being. You don't want to walk up the stairs and be out of breath huffing and puffing from climbing you know, one flight of stairs. You have to have some endurance just to be a normal functioning human being. You know, if it's raining out and your car broke down and you had to run a mile or two, you should be able to run a mile or two. You're, you're an athlete. You know, let's not, let's not say that, you know, you need to be uh, like this big slovenly person who can't, you know, run 100 meters without dying. But you need to have some endurance. Conditioning for throwers should be short, explosive movements. Skipping for a short distance, Okay. Any type of repetitive, explosive jumping, you know, sets of five, six jumps with a little bit of rest in between. Sprinting, sprinting uphill, running up the bleacher steps, and what I like to consider strongman type exercises. Things that will absolutely tax the cardiovascular system without causing muscular endurance. So things like, um, you know, heavy wheelbarrow, uh, movements where you just load up a wheelbarrow full of crap through of all the, the throwing implements and uh, you know walk back and forth with it for a short period of time. Uh, sled drags, uh, sled pushes and pulls if you have something called a prowler, 
Um, you can look that up online, prowler pushes, um, any type of um, you know, explosive medicine ball, repeat explosive medicine ball drills off of walls where you're exploding the ball and pushing the ball really hard off a wall, catching it in a repeat, five, ten in a row, real explosively. That's what we're looking for, sprinter-based movements. Now, it doesn't just mean legs, it means the upper body too. So repetitive throws, repetitive explosive push-ups, you know, six, seven in a row. Nothing crazy, okay, because once endurance gets brought in, the explosiveness goes away. So think of it this way, very explosive movement, one that we can all kind of relate to, is a clapping push-up. Pushing yourself off the ground, clapping, catching, pushing, clapping. That's explosive. Do 20 of those in a row. By the time you get to your 8th, ninth, maybe your 10th one, not as explosive as the first. At some point, explosion goes away and endurance takes over. Look at a sprinter, 100 meter runner, very, very fast. 200 meter runner, really, 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 really fast. 400 meter runner, now we're getting it's a little bit longer distance. Ah. A lot of endurance and speed. 800 meter runner. A little bit more endurance and the speed kind of, they're not as fast as a 100 meter guy. 1500 meter runner. More endurance, not as fast as a 100 meter guy. Nowhere near as fast. 3000 meter runner. Even more endurance. Little speed. 5K. Cross country runner, 5,000, 10,000, steeplechase, 3,000 meter, whatever it might be. Now we're up to pure endurance with very little speed. So you can see as a thrower, to be as explosive and as ballistic as possible, your conditioning needs to be sprints. Uh, skipping, bounding, running, running uphill, sprinting as fast as possible for a short period of time. Repetitive, explosive sprinting mechanics, sprinting movements will carry over very nicely into your throws, very nicely into the circle, and also have a great job, do a great job of getting your heart rate up and getting you in better shape, losing some body fat and getting you cardiovascularly in shape without the endurance to your muscles. So hopefully this makes sense. Hopefully this helps you out. To all the coaches out there having your throwers run long distance, please stop. No need to do that. Yes, they need to be able to be in some type of shape. You don't want them to be these big slovenly guys that can't move or that you know are winded from one or two throws, but there's better way to condition your athletes rather than have them run long endurance distances. Okay? Conditioning does not equal endurance. Keep that in mind. Guys, any other questions, let me know. You can email them to me, matt at primalatc.com. Or you can leave the question down below this YouTube video. That gets emailed to me as well, and I will answer it for you in a future video. Hope to hear from you soon.